Belangelo State Forest is a wooded area located in the Southern Highlands region of New South Wales, Australia. The forest covers an area of approximately 3,640 hectares and is characterised by dense eucalyptus forests, rugged terrain and a network of walking trails. The forest gained widespread attention and notoriety following the discovery of several bodies in the area between 1989 and 1992. All of the victims were backpackers and were found buried in shallow graves throughout the forest. The murders were particularly brutal, with victims being shot, stabbed and in some cases sexually assaulted. The brutal crimes led to one of Australia's most notorious manhunts in its criminal history. From 1989, a series of perplexing events unfolded as numerous young Australian backpackers embarked on their journeys only to vanish without a single trace, leaving behind a shroud of mystery that confounded investigators and shook communities to their core. On the eve of December 30th, 1989, two young Australians, Deborah Everest and James Gibson, both aged 19, embarked from Melbourne, commencing a journey that would tragically result in their uncharacteristic disappearances. Their initial destination was Sydney, where they sought refuge in a backpacker hostel nestled within the vibrant inner city suburbs. Departing from Sydney, the couple's trail grows faint as they embarked on a fateful journey towards Confest, their intention to hitchhike towards Albury. However, the thread of their whereabouts abruptly snaps, leaving only lingering questions in its wake. A mere day following their last confirmed sighting, a bushwalker stumbled upon Gibson's camera, abandoned alongside the road at Galston Gorge in northern Sydney. Curiously, the discoverer opted to take the damaged camera home, its significance not fully realised until later. It wasn't until a month had passed that another piece of the puzzle emerged. Gibson's empty backpack was discovered in the same vicinity, prompting a belated connection to the couple's missing persons report. It wasn't until October 5th, 1993, when a local man searching for firewood made a grim discovery. Human bones. Returning with the police, they found two bodies, later identified as Gibson and Everest. Gibson's skeleton, bearing eight stab wounds, was found in a fetal position. Everest showed signs of a brutal attack, with fractures to her skull and jaw, as well as knife marks on her forehead. Gibson's presence puzzled investigators, as his belongings had been found over 120 kilometres away in northern Sydney months earlier. On the brisk morning of January 20th, 1991, Simona Simi Schmidl, a 21-year-old German national, embarked on a journey from Sydney, her destination, Melbourne. Her purpose was not merely a solitary venture. Rather, she eagerly anticipated a reunion with her mother, who was en route from Germany to partake in a shared camping excursion. With enthusiasm and anticipation fueling her spirit, she bid farewell to acquaintances, weaving a tale of familial joy and adventure ahead. The last sighting of Simone's presence was witnessed at a bustling train station, where she stood amidst the throngs of travellers, poised to embark on the next leg of her journey. Her destination lay in Western Sydney, where she endeavoured to secure passage through the age-old practice of hitchhiking, a venture not uncommon in the realm of nomadic wanderers. However, the promising tale of reunion and adventure was tragically marred by the chilling silence that followed. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into years, with no trace of Simona to be found. The weight of uncertainty hung heavy in the air, casting a shadow over the hopes of those who awaited her return. It wasn't until November 1st, 1993, that the harsh truth was unveiled. During a police sweep of the forest, a skeleton was discovered in a clearing along a fire trail. 
Later identified as Schmidl, the skeleton exhibited at least eight stab wounds, with two severing her spine, and others likely puncturing her heart and lungs. Interestingly, clothing found at the scene did not belong to Schmidl, but matched that of another missing backpacker, Anya Habshid. In the waning days of December of 1991, Gabor Neugebauer, a 21-year-old German backpacker, and his companion, Anja Habschied, aged 20, bid farewell to the bustling confines of the Backpackers Inn in King's Cross, Sydney. Their aspirations were set on a journey that would traverse the vast expanse of Australia, with Adelaide and Darwin as their distant waypoints. It wasn't until November the 4th, 1993, that the bodies of Habschied and Neugebauer were found on a nearby fire trail, in shallow graves just 50 metres apart, their plane tickets home found discarded nearby. Habschied had been decapitated, a chilling echo of the darkness that lurked within the forest's shadows. Her skull was never recovered despite an extensive search, Neugebauer had suffered six gunshot wounds to the head. On the crisp morning of April 18th, 1992, two spirited British citizens, Joanne Walters, aged 22, and Caroline Clark, aged 21, embarked from King's Cross with hearts full of wanderlust and dreams of adventure. Their destination, Victoria, where they hoped to immerse themselves in the seasonal fruit picking. Their travels led them to the scenic Bully Pass, near Wollongong, where they paused briefly to seek guidance on their route, reportedly inquiring about directions to the Hume Highway. Yet, the promise of their journey was cruelly shattered. On September 19th, 1992, a grim discovery unfolded within the depths of Belangelo. Two runners stumbled upon a concealed corpse while orienteering. The next day, police discovered another body nearby. Dental records confirmed the victims as Caroline Clark and Joanne Walters. Walters had been stabbed 15 times, while Clark had been shot 10 times in the head. Despite a thorough search, no further evidence was found in the forest. In response to the discoveries, Task Force Air, comprising of 20 detectives and analysts, was established by the New South Wales Police on October 14th, 1993. The New South Wales government increased the reward for information related to the Belangelo serial killings to $500,000 on November 5th, 1993. Public warnings, particularly aimed at international backpackers, were issued to avoid hitchhiking along the Hume Highway. To manage the vast volume of data, investigators utilised advanced link analysis technology, progressively narrowing down the list of suspects from hundreds to a short list of 32, bringing them closer to apprehending the perpetrator, who had been dubbed by the Australian media at the time as the Beast of Belangelo. All the murders shared striking similarities. Victims were dumped in remote bushland and covered with sticks and ferns. Forensic analysis revealed multiple stab wounds and signs of sexual assault. The perpetrator, likely a local with a 4WD vehicle, spent considerable time with the victims before and after the murders, as evidenced by nearby campsites. Matching 22 caliber bullets and cartridge boxes linked to the crime scenes, as did discarded beer bottles and cigarette butts. Speculation arose about multiple killers due to differing methods and separate burials, particularly as many victims were attacked in pairs. On November 13th, 1993, police received a vital call from Paul Onions, a 24-year-old backpacker from the UK. On January 25th, 1990, while hitchhiking from Liverpool Station towards Mildura, Onions accepted a ride from a man known as Bill, south out of Kasula. Near Belangelo State Forest, Bill attempted to rob Onions at gunpoint. 
Onions managed to escape, seeking help from a passing motorist, Joanne Berry, who reported the incident to Boral Police. Despite missing documents, Constable Notes corroborated Onions' account. Berry's testimony and a suggestion from a colleague's girlfriend prompted police to look into a man named Ivan Malat. Ivan Robert Marco Malat was born on December 27, 1944 in Guildford, New South Wales, to Croatian immigrant Stepan Marco Stephen Malat and Australian Margaret Elizabeth Piddleston. Raised in Bosley Park and later Liverpool, Malat was one of 14 children. Despite financial hardships, his parents prioritised education and discipline, sending their children to Catholic schools. Malat's father's alcoholism often led to outbursts of anger, and the Malat boys were known to local police, spending time handling knives and firearms, practising target shooting in their yard. Siblings recalled Ivan's early antisocial behaviour, including animal cruelty, leading to his enrolment in a residential school at 13. By 17, he was in juvenile detention for theft, followed by a shop break-in at 19. He received multiple sentences for burglary and theft in the mid-1960s. In April 1971, he abducted two hitchhikers, raping one before they escaped. Ivan was arrested and faced charges of rape and armed robbery. While awaiting trial, he participated in robberies with his brothers before faking his suicide at The Gap, a notorious suicide spot in Sydney. Authorities believe Malat fled to Queensland and Victoria before moving to New Zealand for two years. Upon his return to Australia, he lived discreetly using a fake passport. In 1974, he was re-arrested but escaped conviction with legal assistance. He worked as a truck driver from 1975 onwards, occasionally for the Roads and Traffic Authority. In 1977, he unsuccessfully attempted to rape and murder two hitchhikers, but was never charged. Ivan's colleagues in the trucking industry recognised him as a solitary man, who frequently vanished from their digs on away jobs in regions such as the Blue Mountains, Hunter Valley and the New South Wales South Coast. His whereabouts and activities during these periods were never verified by his employer. In 1983, Malat met Karen Duck, who was pregnant by his cousin. They married in 1984 and had a daughter together. However, due to domestic violence, Duck left Malat in 1987 and they divorced in October 1989. During the trial, Duck described Malat as, quote, gun crazy and recalled him killing kangaroos during a visit to Belangelo State Forest. On February 26th, 1994, police surveillance commenced at the Malat residence in Eagle Vale. Malat had recently sold his silver Nissan Patrol shortly after the bodies of Clark and Walters were discovered. Confirmation of Malat's absence from work on attack days, coupled with acquaintances' reports of his weapon obsession, raised suspicions. Malat's brother, Bill, was questioned due to identity use by Ivan, as was another brother, Richard, whose name Ivan had also used. When the connection between the Belangelo murders and Onions' experience surfaced, Onions flew to Australia to assist. On May 5th, 1994, Onions positively identified Malat as his attacker. On May 22nd, 1994, Ivan Malat was arrested at his Eagle Vale home by approximately 50 police officers, including heavily armed tactical operations unit personnel. A search of his residence uncovered various weapons, including rifles matching those used in the murders, a pistol and a knife. Additionally, items belonging to the victims, such as clothing, camping gear and cameras, were found. Searches of his mother's and five brothers' homes, conducted simultaneously by over 300 police officers, 
revealed more weapons, ammunition and additional items linked to the victims. Malat appeared in court on May 23rd, but didn't enter a plea. On May 31st, he faced additional charges related to the backpacker murders. On June 28th, he replaced his defence lawyer and sought legal aid. Meanwhile, his brothers faced trials for weapons, drug and theft-related offences. A committal hearing for Malat began on October 24th and concluded on December 12th, with over 200 witnesses. He was remanded in custody until June of 1995, based on the evidence. The trial began on March 26th, 1996, at the New South Wales Supreme Court, with Mark Tedeschi prosecuting. Despite extensive evidence, Malat's defence argued there was no direct proof of his guilt, attempting to blame other family members, particularly his brother, Richard. Over 145 witnesses testified, including Malat family members providing alibis. Malat himself testified on June 18th. On July 27th, 1996, after 18 weeks of testimony, the jury found Ivan Malat guilty of all murder charges. He received multiple life sentences without parole and additional convictions for the attempted murder, false imprisonment and robbery of Paul Onions, resulting in additional six-year sentences for each charge. Police suspect that Malat may have been involved in more attacks or murders beyond the seven for which he was convicted, based on similarities in modus operandi. The task force suspect Malat may have been involved in approximately 58 other disappearances and suspected murders long before the horrors of Belangelo occurred. His brother once suggested there might be, quote, heaps more bodies awaiting discovery. Additionally, Ivan Malat was highly mobile geographically, beginning his career as a truck driver in the mid-1970s. He transported tyres across different cities, including Adelaide, Melbourne, Brisbane, Goulburn, Yass, Canberra and Perth. Task Force Commander Clive Small identified three unsolved murders who exhibited almost identical modus operandi, indicating a high likelihood of them being victims of Malat. On February 26, 1971, Karen Rowland, an expectant mother, vanished while travelling to a motel in Canberra. Malat allegedly boasted to his co-workers about murdering someone and burying the body in bushland. Her remains were found on May 3rd, 1971, near Canberra. Eyewitnesses reported seeing a vehicle similar to Malat's chasing a woman matching Roland's description. However, her murder remains unsolved. On November 13th, 1987, Peter Letcher, 18, disappeared while hitchhiking to his parents' house. His remains were found near Janolan Caves on January 21st, 1988, with evidence of having been shot, stabbed, blindfolded, bound and possibly sexually assaulted. He was only clothed below the waist and his shirt, which was covered in bullet holes, and a whiskey bottle were found nearby. Malat's estranged wife mentioned he had shown her the area where Letcher was found shortly before the disappearance. On September 6, 1991, 29-year-old Diane Panacchio travelled to the Lake George Hotel in Bungador and planned to hitchhike back to Queen Bayan. She was found murdered on November 13th, 1991, in the Talaganda State Forest, wearing only underwear and trousers, with a stab wound to her spine resembling Milat's M.O. The arrangement of her clothes suggested sexual assault. Panacchio's murder occurred during Milat's known killing spree. Other cases of interest investigated included a series of unsolved disappearances of young women in the Hunter region south of Newcastle, initially attributed to a separate, unidentified serial killer. On December 30th, 1978, Leanne Goodall, 20, was last seen at Newcastle's Star Hotel. 
She was reported missing in February 1979, after being dropped off by her brother at the Muswell Brook railway station earlier that day. Milat, who worked as a road worker in the area during that time, was known to frequent the Star Hotel. Robin Hickey, 18, disappeared on April 7th, 1979, after being last seen at a bus stop near her home. Police initially closed the case, suspecting she left voluntarily. However, a witness later reported seeing Milat at a local hotel the night before Hickey vanished. Amanda Robinson, 14, went missing on April 21st, 1979, while walking home to Swansea from a high school dance in Gateshead. She was last seen on Lake Road after getting off a bus. Despite a thorough investigation, her case remains unsolved. Amanda Zolis, 16, disappeared on October 12th, 1979, after being last seen at a bus stop in Hamilton, Newcastle. She called her father later that night from another location in Newcastle, saying she needed clothing for a trip to Queensland. Despite suspicions of a link to other disappearances, no evidence has been found to support this. Annette Briffa, 18, disappeared on January 10th, 1980, after she was last seen hitchhiking on the Pacific Highway between Mount Cola and Asquith, heading towards Hornsby. Eyewitnesses reported seeing her enter an orange Mazda, or a similar vehicle. Susan Eisenhood, 22, vanished from Mayfield, Newcastle, after being dropped off by her brother near the Stag and Hunter Hotel. She was hitchhiking to Turee. Her skeletal remains were discovered in 1986 in the Kiwarak State Forest, south of Turee. Malat was considered a possible suspect due to records showing he was in the area around the time of Eisenhood's disappearance. Malat became a person of interest in the disappearances of Goodall, Hickey and Robinson during a 2001 inquest. State coroner John Abernethy noted Malat's significant connection to the Hunter region during his work as a road worker in the late 1970s. Allegedly, Malat boasted to a friend about graves and corpse pits in the area. During his testimony, Malat denied involvement with the disappearances, stating he had picked up hitchhikers but not in the Hunter region. Despite suspicions, no charges were brought against Malat due to insufficient evidence. Similar inquiries were conducted in 2005 regarding the disappearance of Briffa, but no charges were filed. Malat has been speculated to be involved in numerous other crimes, including but not limited to the following. On the 4th of July 1972, Anita Cunningham, 18, and Robin Hoynville Bartram, 19, left Melbourne hitchhiking to Queensland. Hoynville Bartram was found shot under a bridge at Sensible Creek with a 22 caliber rifle, similar to the one Malat used. Cunningham's remains were never found. Although authorities investigated Malat's actions, no direct connection was established. On the 5th of October, 1973, Gabrielle Yanka, 18, and Michelle Riley, 16, hitchhiked from Brisbane to the Gold Coast. Yanka's body was found a week later at the foot of a slope on the Pacific Highway. Ten days after their disappearance, Riley's body was discovered in remote bushland off the Mount Tambourine Highway, with signs resembling Malat's methods. Lydia Knotts, a 21-year-old German national, disappeared in Chapel Hill, Queensland, on the 31st of October 1976. She left a note saying she would return in a week, but she never came back. Experts in a 2021 TV programme suggested she could be a victim of Malats. Norelle Mary Cox, 21, disappeared on the 20th of July 1977 during a trip to Noosa, Queensland. She is believed to have gone missing in the Brunswick Heads area of New South Wales, where Malat worked. Despite suspicions, he was ruled out as a suspect due to conflicting work dates, although this decision has faced criticism. 
Barbara Carol Brown, a 22-year-old American, disappeared in New South Wales on May 17th, 1978. She was last seen leaving her Melbourne boyfriend's brother's home in Beecroft, intending to hitchhike to Queensland and then travel to Perth. Despite extensive search efforts, she was never found. In 2021, Brown was proposed as a possible victim of Malats. On August 25th, 1978, Stephen Lapthorne, 20, and Michelle Pope, 18, vanished while travelling from Lapthorne's home in West Pimble to Pope's home in Barora. Their lime green Bedford was never found. Investigators suspect foul play, believing their remains might be in the Kuringai Chase National Park. In August 2005, a coroner's inquiry suggested Malat was likely responsible, but the cause of death remains undetermined. On January 11th, 1979, Alan Martin Fox, 22, and Annika Adriansen, 17, vanished after hitchhiking from Barora Heights to Kempsey and Byron Bay. Last seen on Byron Bay's main street the next day, their disappearance was deemed suspicious, with Malat considered a potential suspect given his possible presence on the northern New South Wales coast. Tony Marie Cavanagh, 15, and Kay Doherty, 16, vanished on July 27th, 1979, after seen at a bus stop in Wollongong. A letter received later, postmarked Darlinghurst and dated August 1st, stated they were in Sydney, but they were never heard from again. Malat was probed as a suspect in a 2013 inquest, but lacked concrete evidence. Kim Cherie Tear, 17, vanished in East Melbourne around September 1979 while attempting to travel to Adelaide with her border collie. In her last letter to her mother, she expressed fear of hitchhiking and requested her birth certificate to obtain a driver's licence. Victorian Homicide Squad detectives suspect foul play in her disappearance. On February 1st, 1980, Elaine Johnson, 17, and Kerry Ann Joel, 18, disappeared after last being seen in Cronulla. They were hitchhiking to Wyong and were presumed to have encountered violence during their journey. Malat, who was working in the region they were travelling to at the time, is considered the prime suspect. On the 12th of June 1980, nurses Deborah Balkin and Gillian Jameson, both 20, were last seen with a man with a wide-brimmed cowboy hat in Parramatta Tavern. They planned to hitchhike to a party in Wollongong. Malat, employed in Western Sydney at the time, was questioned about their disappearance and was considered a person of interest in the inquiry into their wrongful deaths. Joanne Lacey and Leslie David Toshak, both 20, went missing on the 20th of April 1981 while hitchhiking from Sydney to Byron Bay for a surfing trip. In 2012, a coroner determined that their deaths were suspicious. On the 10th of March 1991, Carmen Verhaden, 22, vanished while hitchhiking near the Crossroads Hotel, Liverpool, around 12.30am after leaving a party to return home to Westmead. Speculation arose that Malat might have been involved since she disappeared from a location similar to the backpacker abductions. However, detectives found no evidence linking Verhaden to him during their investigation in November 1993. And finally, on the 23rd of November 1992, Melanie Merrill Sutton, 14, and her elder brother, Chad Everett Sutton, 16, disappeared from Inala, Queensland, after leaving for school on foot. They had planned to hitchhike to Perth to find their father, and are suspected to have passed through the Belangolo State Forest. They have never been found. All cases share similarities, however there is not enough physical evidence to tie Ivan Malat to each of these individual cases. Experts state, however, due to being in his mid-40s when the Belangolo murders occurred, it is strongly believed that Malat had a long history of crimes of a similar nature that had simply gone undetected over the years. 
It is highly irregular for a serial killer to begin their murder sprees later in life. In 2001, Malat was compelled to provide evidence at an inquest into the disappearances of three other female backpackers in the Newcastle area. Related cold cases include Gordana Kotevsky's disappearance in 1994. Despite Malat's presence in the area during the crimes, no charges were filed due to insufficient evidence. Similar inquiries were initiated in 2003 and 2005, but no charges were brought. During his incarceration, Ivan appealed his sentence for the Belangolo murders. However, despite numerous attempts, all were rejected. Given the potential for an accomplice, the murder cases remain open. Malat's former lawyer, John Marston, claimed that on his deathbed in 2005 that Malat's sister, Shirley Soir, assisted him in the killings of two British backpackers. However, Ivan denied his family's involvement in any of the murders. As it later transpired some years later, bloodlust appeared to be a family trait. In 2012, Ivan's great-nephew, Matthew Malat, and his friends, Cohen Klein, both 19 at the time, were sentenced to 43 years and 32 years in prison, respectively, for murdering David Ochterlone in Belangolo State Forest in November 2010. Matthew wielded a double-headed axe, while Klein recorded the attack on a mobile phone. In May 2015, Malat's brother, Boris, disclosed to former detective Steve Aperin that Malat admitted to accidentally shooting taxi driver Neville Knight during a 1962 robbery, leaving Knight paralysed. Despite never being charged, Aperin, after conducting polygraph tests, was convinced of Malat's guilt. Similarly, Clive Small, who led the backpacker murder investigation, believed Malat was responsible for Knight's shooting, citing similarities with his other crimes. In May 2019, Ivan was transferred to the Prince of Wales Hospital, Randwick, after being diagnosed with terminal esophageal cancer. Following treatment, he was moved to the Long Bay Correctional Centre to serve the remainder of his sentence. In his final days, New South Wales police made multiple attempts to elicit a confession from Malat, visiting him eight times in the prison and in hospital, but he did not confess. Although he never officially confessed, it's reported that he admitted to his mother that he was responsible for the backpacker murders. On August 9th, 2019, due to significant weight loss and a high temperature, Malat was relocated to a secure treatment unit at the Prince of Wales Hospital, although his condition was not deemed life-threatening. He was pronounced dead on October 27th, 2019 at 4.07am at the age of 74. Before his death, Malat requested that the New South Wales government cover his funeral expenses, but the request was denied. Instead, his body was cremated, with costs covered by his prison account. Despite its dark history, Belangolo State Forest remains a popular destination for outdoor enthusiasts, including hikers, campers and picnickers. The New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Service manages the forest and has implemented measures to ensure visitor safety, including increased patrols and signage warning of the area's history. While the forest continues to attract visitors, it remains a sombre reminder of the tragic events that unfolded there decades ago and reminds us of all of the lives that were tragically cut short by the beast of Belangolo.